prepare for the end Prepare for doomsday but you already dead Prepare for combat, they will chop off your head You would think this is a joke till you see the bloodshed Somebody help me now, this world is out of control I think I'm losing my mind Good afternoon, it's Thursday, May 12th, 2016 You're listening to a Gen Pop Media production my name's Howard. I'm joined by my buddies Dave and David, as always. We got Cat in the studio, and guess who came back because he missed us? I'm back. I got. I am so tired of the midnight text with where, where he's weeping and just like, dude, I miss you so much. I want to. <laughs> I want to <laughs> snuggle. Can you put on the pajamas with the footies? I, he, yeah, drew, he drew the so short back, straw. Eric, it's nice Can to you have imagine you. me in footy pajamas? Stop That's with the I, visuals. I don't need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't go there. No, I don't think. Hey, by the way, who's Dave and who's David? Uh, you're Dave and he's David. Yeah. Are you like why you like freaky about Dave versus David? No, no. I just no, I just call you Dave more than I call no. him Dave. Oh, it's because at, oh, at home, at home, at home, I'm Dave because the little one's David. David, right? So what you want, you can call me whatever you want. Well, oh, you guys, how can, about Mary? You guys Mary's can fine. Decide, yeah. and I'll switch. Just it don't, on the just meme. don't pray to me, and we're good. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> my, well, mom, you, you, my mom just got pissed. Sorry, Mama. Remember, it's not down the conventional hall. Don't trust any one person so that you don't carry someone else's mistake with you, including ours. Do your own research because there are no more secrets, only ignorance. Actually, doing research this week, I found a bunch of stuff that, I, that was new to me. we got to find a cable to hook up to that monitor because I want to show you guys these images that we're going to be talking about today. Because we're talking about symbols, and not just symbols... Hopefully, no, it, no, we're not stopping at symbols. What else? We well, the about? symbols kind of lead into. I mean, a symbol doesn't necessarily have to be just something visual. It can be an activity. It can be an event. It can be. Uh, it's something that symbolizes something else. In my world, that included a lot of uh, what I call predictive programming. Are you guys familiar with what that is? Yes. So a lot of these worldwide events that happen that seem to have so many questions around them, there is a beyond coincidental uh, frequency of appearance of these events before they happen in music, television, um, mainstream media. And uh, we're going to show some in my little sweet spot, which is 9-11. That's where I found some new ones that I was just like, are you kidding me? That's where I was like somewhat surprised. I didn't think I could be surprised. I was surprised this week. And uh, so we're going to cover some of that stuff. I'll be ready to gab. So basically this topic came about because we were uh, having an off-air discussion uh, on the break last week. And Kat was talking about the symbolism and stuff. And uh, she had noticed some things. And so we decided to do a little research and get going on that. Yeah, the symbols thing for me is, uh, you know, when I first started becoming conspiracy theorist, people were like, oh, the symbols, the symbols. And I was just like, okay, you know, every, you know, someone, yeah, is going to have something that looks like an eye in their logo. But after a while, you start to see that it's not, a, it's not an accident. It's a messaging system. Well, logos, from a graphic design standpoint, are very... Very calculated. Oh, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, you, the colors are chosen for certain reasons, and the colors that complement them are chosen for other reasons, and, and they use curves and instead of straight in, instead of straight lines on certain things. So there's all kinds of thought. I, I, one of the excuse me, one of the uh, logos I researched was when Pepsi changed from just the the circle with the white bar to the the the, the more curvy white area. It cost Pepsi. They paid the head agency a million dollars to change that logo like that. All the research that went into it, it took like a year to implement everything. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. And speaking of Pepsi, if someone someone's going to need to be like hot on the button to look up <laughs> some of these images right now after that transformation there were two significant things pepsi did one of them is when you had stacked their cans in the right order different sets Mm -hmm. of six packs it would actually say sex 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 across it that's not a big deal and nor is that an accident disney movie yeah exactly (laughs) and they're loaded with symbolism and uh, the other one is the squiggly line which used to be the you know the white which was essentially the equivalent of a horizontal white space has now rotated 45 yeah. degrees yeah. when you hold those two pepsi cans together it's as if you know there are two eyes that just got angry you should be able to find the images there but you hold two cans together and it looks like there's an angry uh, face looking at you it looks like eyes so symbols history of symbols we covered this on a show a few weeks back you know when did symbols start to become important i don't know if we can find if we can prove this but this is at least a thesis personal of mine 
Tower of Babel. And Dave, that was one of your areas of expertise. This was written about in Genesis 6, was it? Somewhere in there? Genesis, yeah, or 11. It was I think uh, 11. construction run by Nimrod, the king of Babylon at the time. And Babylon has always represented the opposite of, in a, in a sense, heaven. And you'll find, it, or Israel, and you'll find Babylon and Jerusalem, or Babylon and Israel, talked about geographically, spiritually, in, on many different levels. It is not just a place on a map. It is also uh, in a, a spiritual association of people, and the Bible even discusses how essentially these aren't the exact words, but everyone here, whether they know it or not, they're either of Jerusalem or of Babylon. Jerusalem, obviously, that's God's city, and guess whose Babylon's is. So Nimrod was ordering the construction of the Tower of Babel. Babel in ancient Sumerian, Babel, is doorway to the gods. The Bible talks about how this was upsetting God because they were trying to reach into the heavens. And then you're looking, looking at it in a 2D way, you'd think, oh, it was a really tall building and that's what the problem was. But archaeology, research, theologians, they've come together in an uncoordinated fashion to uh, basically discover that what the Tower of Babel was was a super high technology device, not far, I believe, removed from what we've find at CERN, in that large Hadron Collider, we found evidence of things you'd never thought were in existence 3,000 plus years ago. A lot of people theorize that they were trying to make some type of stargate, some type of entry into other dimensions, which would be the dimensions that the, the spiritual world, by and large, operates in. Invisible to us, for the most part, not completely. So what God did is he confused the languages, and all the people that were working on this project, all of a sudden spoke different languages, and it killed the construction project. And that was, uh, if you look at history as this spiritual war, that was a battle in it, and that was a battle won by God. Satan's response to that was to begin to use symbols, and you will find symbols beginning to take off right from Babylon, right at the time that the Tower of Babel was being worked on, because symbols, doesn't matter what language you speak, a pyramid is a pyramid, an eye is an eye. You can find it going back to the currency of Babylon. In fact, you'll find some unique symbols that exist still to this day on currency that begins in Babylon. One symbol is eagle's feathers, eagle's wings spread out. It's something you saw with the Sumerians, and if anyone wants to look up some Sumerian symbolism right now, you'll see it. It was on their buildings, it was on the Babylonians' buildings, same with the Greeks, the Romans, up through the Nazis also had the symbol with the eagle holding the swastika and of course that's now moved into the united states with the eagle holding 13 arrows and a bunch of feathers i mean everything on that bill there's meaning behind it it very much everything means something for those playing along at home tower of babel is uh, genesis 11 yeah genesis thank you so you'll also find babylonian coins that have hybrid Mm -hmm. creatures on them It wasn't just something the Greeks put on their buildings. And I definitely, you know, I don't believe those were just mythical creatures to the Greeks. For the same reason, we wouldn't put Chewbacca or Yoda all over our Capitol building. We put up real things that we praise, that we love, that we pray to. Of course, skeletons have been found, and enough archaeology has been found to back up the fact that there was something strange going on with the mixing of DNA all throughout history. And, of course, that was probably what was behind the flood was clean up the corrupted creation that God had made. That is where these symbols begin, and we're not just talking about eagles. You're also going to see some owls. In fact, look up owls on currency. And there's yeah, some, some would actually contend it's not an eagle. It's actually a falcon and or a raven. That has biblical implications. Uh, those are dirty birds. Well, at least the raven is. Right. It's a dirty bird. To, uh, all right, to kind of change the subject a little bit, Dave, do you happen to know what the dimensions are of the new... The, I'm going to tie this together here in a second. What are the dimensions of the new heaven, the new Jerusalem that's going to be coming down? The it, dimensions? Yeah. Remember, God, somewhere God talks about it's the new Jerusalem is going to be like 1,600 furlongs by 1,600 furlongs or cubits. Or, it's more than that. It's Revelation, but, right? 
Is it Revelation? I think so. New Jerusalem area, according to the internet, 1.91 million square miles. Now, that's these are the uh, dimensions of the new city that is going to be coming down. Ah. And I think this is where the symbolism for the pyramids. Now, anyone that is tuned into the workings of the occult, the Illuminati, the, the left-hand pathers, the, the dark side, whatever you want to call it, you will see pyramids and or pyramids with all-seeing eyes. It's... Uh, it's all a, it's over Revelation the place. 21. Revelation 21 yeah. says that uh, it will be 10 times bigger than the dimension of the city in Ezekiel 48, which is also in uh, Revelation 20. Uh, the New Jerusalem of Revelation 21 is 2,225 200, kilometers in length, width, and height. So that's about 2 million square miles. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, it'll fit everyone on Earth with half of the space, you know, free for parks oh, or whatever. The, the, the next sentence goes on to say that a city this gigant- of these gigantic proportions cannot be located on this Earth. Because it is 2250 or 2225 yeah. length, width, and height. And height, yes. I keep hearing over and over these theologians talking about how this thing is going to be shaped like a cube. Because you're thinking, oh, well, you know, a cube has three equal. Right. But another type of structure that fits those dimensions is a pyramid. True. Satan's a counterfeiter. And what was the first shape of edifice that could be found on all? We've now found them on all continents, including Antarctica. It's a pyramid. Yeah, the pyramids. So I think that there was something behind that where, again, Satan is taking something he's already seen. We, uh, in our you know narrow path site, might view it as a cube. But I suspect it'll be a pyramid because if you look at the pyramid, pyramids today. They were all involved. They were the center of sacrifice. That's where the kings of the earth ruled from. A lot of people think they're tombs, but I I think there is much, much more to them than that. I can't speak very well about symbols of pyramids until Adam Weishaupt started the new incursion of the Illuminati, because that is when we began to see the all-seeing eye. Dave, you look like you've just found something interesting. I looked up diagram of New Jerusalem, and it actually matches up from what I remember just from memory don't quote me on this but I'm looking at this diagram and it looks a lot like one of the patterns that are carved in the earth um Nazca lines the Nazca Nazca line, lines. yeah that's okay. in Brazil right or Argentina they're actually all over the place too the, well, big ones, the so famous are... ones are in Peru 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 that's it they're all over the place in fact near the Nazca lines you've got the remains of Puma Kunku which and I believe I'm saying that properly and that is these massive monolithic stones that weighed thousand tons, hundreds of tons. Nothing, we can't even lift it with any device we've ever made on Earth. We can't even move these things. And the precision with which they were cut, these walls are assembled so you can't even slip a butter knife or a sheet of paper in between them. And they're formulaic. We cannot reproduce some of the incisions they made in this stone totally smoothed out cylindrical with lasers all kinds of so we could use all that and can, can't get these lines i love watching that stuff the nasda lines though that's a, or whatever they didn't they, it was like an ancient runway or something like that wasn't well, it? there's, there's a whole them, lot of different yeah. there's a lot more than even we know about and they're all over the place not just in south america I'm yeah I, I personally i think again that's now the ancient alien guys will say oh they were runways for the aliens but i think it was aliens. just uh it was the same it was, <laughs> i know who you're talking about but Got it was the, the same um, these are the same fallen angels that have been one of the uh, main characters of our show because they are in play and there have been all throughout history. They are just disguising themselves as little green men from another planet these days. But uh, they're deceivers. I wouldn't trust them. I don't think they're benevolent. These were the people that came from the sky. That was written about in over 200 documented societies and cultures and probably many more that all had this exact same story of these angelic light beings that came from whatever their word was for heaven. It doesn't matter if you're Aztec or um, Native American Indian or Inca or Egyptian. It is the same story. And they all also talk about a flood, too, which is... I wonder if there's a book out there that discusses yeah, these While they're rolling heads down a pyramid, drinking exactly. blood. Interesting <laughs> combination of practices. There's too many. We'll never cover them. So we got to keep this to a few things. The eagle or the bird... The spread wings. The symbolism for the wings has a lot to do with the wings of fallen angels. Money and currency. We're going to see the footprints, I believe, we will see. 
the footprints of the demonic presence on this in this world from the beginning of history. We'll see it in currency. Now, it's only been recently since we've got things like film and electronic media, so those things weren't around. But currency was, and that was almost like the printing press of the world until we actually had a real printing press and started making books. But it was one of the only messaging systems, in a sense, that existed. And it's actually still used today. I don't know if you guys ever get, like, $1 bills, which will say, investigate 9-11 or... Oh, yeah. Yeah, somebody's phone number on it or a website on it. Yep. Where's George? You ever seen that one? No. You enter in the serial number of the dollar bill, and it tells you where it's been all over. Oh, that's, I think oh, that's, that's fascinating. Cool. Yeah. So based on that, before there's credit cards or anything, they can literally track. They know the money you got from the bank, and they can tell when that serial number pops up at your local Meyer or Kroger, because when they make their cash deposits at the end of the day, the serial number that you were given was now in the hands of the Meyer Bank. My friend who's in the FBI used to brag about the fact they could basically find out where any person spent every single penny going back five years if they wanted to. Every penny. Even though the person themselves might not know it because they don't have the receipts or whatever. But they have us had access to a lot of tools, which um, they don't even need now because our lives are basically an open book for anyone to just examine. The wings, which you'll see from Samaria to the Greeks to the Romans to the Nazis to the USA today. And in many nations. Uh, the owl and the all-seeing eye, which we typically see in a pyramid. So if we keep it just to those symbols... Yeah, wh- why do you think it is that... I mean, I, I was just thinking about the all-seeing eye and the pyramid. You know, those are two separate symbols, but yet it seems that those two are put together a lot. Is it just because, you know, people are used to seeing them, so they you know think it's cool, so when they put do it, you know, it's like, oh, people will recognize this if I throw this all-seeing eye in a pyramid on my logo. It's interesting you say that, because... I mean, is there a special reason why those two are linked so often? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it had something to do with that documentary that you suggested I take a look at talking about corruptions in modern-day Bibles. So whereas the King James Version, for instance, says that Jesus Christ is the cornerstone, the New International Version has changed it from the cornerstone... To the capstone. To the capstone. Well... That's where the eye resides on our dollar bill. It's in the capstone. There was something special about the capstones of the pyramids in Egypt. They were coated with a different material. And one of them is uh, a picture of George Bush. He's in bed with his uh, kids. In fact, I'm staring at it right now. And there's a picture of, again, you know, there's a pyramid on his little uh, breakfast tray table, if you can see that. And you can actually see the capstone on there, which that to me looks more representative of what the pyramids looked like at the height of their magnificence. You know, they've been robbed, eaten up by grave robbers, tomb raiders, you name it. When was, uh, when was when did they start the NIV project? Was that the 60s? Probably. Sounds about right. Because I, I found something interesting as I was just digging through some, some research. Uh, it says that New Age Luciferians call Satan the capstone. But just thinking about it quickly, that ties in with the whole <coughs> deceiving and the Antichrist. Because if they've changed Christ from the cornerstone to the capstone, and, Lu- and Luciferians have always considered Satan the capstone there's your false messiah though the people the luciferians in this world they are they don't look at satan as second tier they don't look at him as having lost when they are out on a plank they'll say something like there was a great misunderstanding in the heavenlies and satan's going to get that fixed up in a stronger way of saying it he's going to wage war against the son of the creator god and he's his people the luciferians in this world they believe wholeheartedly he's going to win and they're um i think they're in for a surprise but even with that said i don't know if it's just what's the motivation for him to associate himself as the capstone in the bible is it just an f u at jesus christ or is it all part of one big strategy to confuse the bible or to get any of his presence more deeply woven into it more than it is all right well let's start going through some examples We're going to cover examples that span, we've touched a little bit on ancient history, but I don't want to spend too much time there because one of the things that we're doing on this show is we're trying to open the eyes of people around here that there is uh, an evil presence in this world. It is manifesting itself. It is seemingly much more powerful and larger than originally believed. 
And one of the ways that they show their strength is by putting their emblems on the same way as a business owner. I want my logo on every possible product we put out there i don't want it i don't want it to go on without anywhere you look i want yeah i want them to see my logo exactly i mean and that creates familiarity it creates power it creates trust it creates confidence you might also add that it is a show of strength you know if you are someone that is in one of these secret societies or something along those lines and you see your own you know your own team's logo you're going to feel more emboldened about what it is you're doing and what you're holy cow we really do own the media and space and the military and governments and communication the examples we're going to go through are heavily embedded in those areas i don't think you'll find a lot of pyramids on plumbing supply companies i think you will find them inside of militaries space exploration uh publishing printing anything that shapes our thoughts and opinions, you will find a preponderance of the symbols we're going to be talking about in those areas, uh, more so than you would find, let's say, a shamrock. But you won't find it in businesses that don't impact the belief systems of people. So you won't find this in plumbing supplies. You won't find it in um, upholstery retailers, for instance. You won't find it, uh, well, you won't find it in pl- plumbing supplies, but you, I suspect you will find it, well, you will find it with those that provide water to the people. Same type of water that Flint is having a problem with. Water is very important and what they put in it that we are drinking, there's fluoride in our water. We're not supposed to take in fluoride. Why is there fluoride in our water? Why is Seattle, Portland area, Oregon, one of the last state holdouts that is fighting against having fluoride put in there? And why is there even pressure to put, of all the things we could put in water, minerals, uh, so many other why fluoride i mean fluoride is what was used to dumb down the populace of nazi germany it was used in the death camps to keep the prisoners pliable in high enough dosages it's lethal in lower dosages it creates an enamel cover over our pineal gland which eastern religions called the third eye the spiritual center so is it possible that with this enamel that gets formed by the fluoride we take in our ability to communicate with anything spiritual with god is hindered well and it's it's actually really easy to come by because it's a byproduct of aluminum production so it's 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 pretty much that's well we'll take it here and we'll take it over here and repackage it and sell it for a profit uh, it's brilliant it's good for your teeth we're gonna be uh taking a break soon yeah top of the hour two minutes all right so when we come back why don't we start to go through some real live examples we're going to show some images to the folks here but we're going to talk about corporations governments aerospace the things that control us the control grid and we're going to see a pattern of how these things are interconnected and they are uh, they're poised to do something important good afternoon and welcome back to down the rabbit hole our topic today is symbolism and how it translates into things we see every day that have hidden meanings that we know frankly very little about we left off dave was uh prepping us for uh, what he's going to walk us through now, which is, uh, again, symbolism in modern day advertising on money, financial institutions. Probably not plumbing supply places, though, he was saying. No, but you will find it. We were talking about Procter & Gamble last week. And if you guys want, if you pull up the Procter & Gamble logo, the one that caused a stir in the 80s, I pulled it up and I took a second look at it. I already knew that it was an issue. I hadn't looked at Maybe ever. I just had it saved. As soon as I looked at it, I didn't even have to count. I'm like, I know there are 13 stars in that logo. And there were. There are 13 stars. You'll also see a 666 inverted in Procter & Gamble's logo, which is part of the uh, the beard of, I don't know who is supposed to be represented in there. You'll see a horn coming out of the moon. Here, it's on my uh, screen right now. So uh, that's obviously, that's a demonic image. It's a pagan god of some sort. Uh, and it's on a corporate logo. And another thing that food companies, believe it or not, are heavily, they're littered with these logos. And sometimes a sign, it's not just a pyramid. Sometimes, you know, we all, there's a few hand signs that exist. And sometimes, you know what, they're just done innocently. And they don't mean anything. Like when you make a three-pointer in the NCAA tournament, you're doing this equivalent of an okay sign. And you'll even see some of those college kids put it over their eye so that it's looking like a one-eyed okay sign. And the okay sign 
and actually this is, if you make that okay sign with your hand, it is actually in dark circles, it is a symbol of 666. You're making three sixes. Your index finger and thumb make the, the zero, and then your three phalanges that are hanging there form three individual sixes. And of course, there's the horns, you know, the devil horns, the Baphomet head, whatever you want to call it. I just happen to be watching one day a Pizza Hut commercial. This one's got Aaron Rodgers in it. And there's a guy, you guys can probably see this. There's a character in the ad that's making a demonic hand sign, but it's not overt. Like, there's there's room for doubt. But then at the end of the ad, they left no room for doubt because they actually wrote in, they, they put a, design, a graphic in of yeah. devil horn hands, yep. which, yeah, could be rock and roll. But of course, you know, don't get me wrong, I love rock music, but it's been one of the biggest uh, recruiting tools, I think, for the dark side for the last 50 or so, 60 years. So Pizza Hut's one. You know, we talked about Pepsi. Another interesting one that popped across my screen was, we're all familiar with what? I just, just so obvious, so right in your face all the time, never struck me until today. Which? I can see your computer. Good. So we're looking at the Apple logo. Now, I'm not just going to do logos that are ambiguous. I'm going to tie this together. When you are looking at this with the images, your, your jaw is going to drop because it's, it begins to leave no questions. And the Apple logo is there's a bite out of an apple, which was Satan's first victory, getting Eve to take a bite of that apple. Although Apple themselves will associate the apple with the apple that fell on Newton's head. But you'll also notice <clears throat> the Apple logo that they carried from 1976 to 1998 had all the colors of the rainbow. Rainbows are important. It's also the representative of the gay community. I mean, it's the rainbow color design. I, I don't know where the association yeah, began. Well, that was hijacked, actually, yeah. I believe. I yeah. can oh, I, totally. I, I do can too, because that rainbows were a sign from God that there was a covenant in that place. That is the covenant between God and man, yes. Right. But when the Supreme Court passed that law recently, all of a sudden you saw from Google to the White House to the vast majority of the Fortune 2000 came out that day. That day. You need to be coordinated. Howard, you're in printing and graphics, and you just said it best. I mean, how long have we been working on a logo? for gen pop media Months. long time you talked about these pepsi spent a year and a million dollars yep. so you have to understand what is a for-profit business taking an interest in a court ruling about homosexuality that they would actually have logos ready to go on all of their products as soon as that law was passed by itself doesn't doesn't say anything However, going back to Apple, the very first Apple computer, and this was an ad that ran in a newspaper in 1976, very archaic-looking machine. Dave, take a wild guess of what the price of that machine was. Six, $66.66? $666.66. Oh, I mean, that's crazy. You're kidding. Nope. <laughs> that's got to be a joke. And uh, this is, I think, a f we're looking at a Fox News image right now where they've got the Apple and the 666. And you're going to see that 666 all over the place. You'll see it with stars. Like we're looking at an image now of Fergie, again, doing the OK sign. Now, could these be natural signs? I suppose. But why don't we see more peace signs, for instance? I don't think there's a performer that does not at some point, from Kesha all the way to the Beatles... I mean, you will find that 666 in their hands. Beyonce, uh, Emma Roberts, it's on their album covers, it's on their press material, and they all seem to have these exact certain hand signs. But just looking at the 666, it's ubiquitous. I mean, yeah, it's actually, it seems like, and this could be reading into it too much, but probably not, that I've noticed instead of them just flashing that sign, they're actually now holding it up so their eye is in the center of it. That's what I was talking about with the NCAA tournament players. Like some of them might do it innocently. When you hit a three-pointer, they're you know putting their uh, hands on their eyes. So I don't think there's anything necessarily demonic from one of those. So you have to understand, like every time you see it doesn't mean it's... Right. Sometimes people just follow the sheep ahead of them and they don't know why they're doing it. What was that movie where Jake Gyllenhaal played the... Um, the reporter. It was gruesome stories. I mean, they, he, he, it was here. It was filmed here in Detroit. There's a. We're looking at a scene from that film right now, and he's in the newsroom of one of his clients that buy his pictures of these accidents. Here again, it's Channel Six, and they've got three sixes just clearly shown. <laughs> Here's another one: cosmetics. If you read the Book of Enoch, 
cosmetics and the art of beauty, like beautifying a person, beautifying a woman, was a specific trait, specific skill taught by the fallen angels. It's discussed in Enoch. In fact, right. I think it was Azazel who was also taught how to make weapons of war. And he was the same guy that also taught about how to make women beautiful and alluring and attractive. And even going back 2,000 years ago, God's talking about how the women of Jerusalem in the day, they were more worried about their anklets and bracelets and nose rings. And what do we have today? I mean, right. it's all over the place. So L'Oreal Paris, uh, they come out with a product. It is a high shine hair elixir. And uh, Dave, guess what the price was of this product? Six dollars and sixty-six cents. Yeah, and underneath it, you'll also <laughs> see what's the name of the city underneath the six six six. Babylon. Babylon. That's insane. Not a mistake. Madonna, who, if you ask me, is whenever you run across someone that is a, a, a superstar, a media like a Madonna level type of performer, you don't get to that level without having made a deal at some point and you will see her imagery littered with demonic symbols where now we're looking at a picture of her flashing the uh double six 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 what was the movie she was in with rosanna arquette in the 80s oh, remember desperately madonna seeking susan. Oh, desperately yeah. seeking right. susan if someone pulls that one up right now oh the pyramid on the back there's a of pyramid the with an all-seeing eye on the back of her jacket oprah who's going to end up leading a lot of people astray because she believes there are many paths to heaven. You see her with her some of her official photos doing the double 666. Um, Shakira does the same thing. Who's that little, any little performer coming out of Disney? I mean, they're already screwed up before they even hit puberty. But what's this girl's name? Cute, Hispanic. Oh, Selena Ariana Grande. Gomez. Yeah. Gomez, Selena thank Gomez. you. Gomez, okay. yeah. I have kids. So it's not just, though, <laughs> it's not just artists, because it's also... Oh, I just pulled up the image of uh, Obama wearing that Aleister Crowley shirt. Oh, that's a classic. This is the president of our nation. Yeah. Now, Aleister Crowley is one of the biggest proponents of flat-out demonic power. Yeah, call them up. Like, would would he did like perform? Seances. Some believe that he mated with Barbara Bush, and that is where uh, that's the real father of the Holy Bush children. Lord, I've never. Oh, that's a conspiracy <laughs> theory, and I don't know if that one's true. But you know, honestly, every time I go looking into those things, there's so, there's a lot of teeth. Well, in the them. word you used is appropriate since it's Aleister Crowley we're talking about. <laughs> Aleister Crowley actually uh, had his name changed specifically so that if you did gematria on his name, which is the association of yeah. letters to numerical values, which you find in Hebrew and a lot of ancient languages, it actually, no matter what language you add up, hit the letters of his name comes out to 666. Right. And our, the president of our country, as the Bible predicted, the kings of the earth will be in the hand yeah. of Satan. I think I was looking into Aleister Crowley. I actually learned that Yoda is actually a specific demon. It's not just a Star Wars character. It's actually a real entity that you can <clears throat> do a specific um, like seance or ritual and actually pull this thing out and Yoda will appear. And it just so happens to be this short little demon guy. You can look that up. But, I, you, but you first have to have full allegiance to Baphomet before you can perform this ceremony. So I'm going to be going through a number of images, but you're going to see either Devil Horns or the 666, and we're going to be looking at a series of world leaders or influencers. Ahmadinejad, the uh, leader of Iran, you see him doing a double devil's horn. We'll see that also from the Pope. Not surprising to see it with rock stars, sure. musicians. It, those That does not blow me away. I do find it interesting that an old Beatles album has both, both symbols. Both of them. Paul McCartney with one, John Lennon with the other. Yeah. They, that, that goes back a long time that they were all symbolized with, you know, um, Manson. You know, that's that's why he started killing people. He said he listened to the Helter Skelter album was like, they were speaking to me to kill that's people, right. you know, so... The Beatles go back, you know, into the 70s, early 70s with their de not demonic... It, well, even the uh, 60s, so... With the bear, him walking across the street barefooted, that was something, you know, there was all kinds of stuff. I read just today that uh, at the photo shoot for the Yellow Submarine, right. they, and you know, they had all those different characters, yeah. they wanted to bring and put Hitler in that picture, but Oof. MCI Records would not, or EMI, whoever it was at the time, wouldn't let him. Beyonce, of course, there's probably lots of images of... This is someone that 
if you ask me, is sold out Justin Bieber. Their official photographs. Too many of them to be coincidental. There are so many different signs you can make with your hands. You know, good luck, peace. But to see so many of them focused around this subject matter. Now, some more interesting ones are when uh, our presidents do it. So we've got George Bush. Now, when he does it by himself, there again, you know, maybe it's it's just a leftover habit from college or something like that. But there seems to be an awful lot of them. And then I reached a particular image in which I said to myself, okay, this is not normal. You'll notice George Bush standing there and he's... When you see... When was the last time you ever got dressed up? Uh, We're looking at uh, some pictures right now of Bush with some of his campaigners when he won second re-election into office. And you'll see large numbers of his staff and his campaign team sporting this same demonic hand sign. Not just one guy at a time. It's coordinated because more than one of them are doing it. In this particular image, there are, if you look in the image, you've got one, two, three, four, and of course the presidents. That's five. And there are only five people in in that picture that are viewable. Uh, George Bush is hanging out with the Queen of England. At his left side, he is making an upside down devil horn. Uh, His daughter uh, at that same event, same story. It's interesting with the queen because the queen does it too. And see, this is what this is what blows my mind because you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a total metal guy, and have a lot of history with this stuff. And George Bush, the queen, his daughter, all of these people he hang out, he's hanging out with, are absolutely not metal at all. Now, this one caught my mind, caught my eye. Okay, so we're looking at an image of George Bush and First Lady at the time where. Um, they are both together flashing devil horns. Right. When was the last time you and your wife got dressed up, you're wearing black tie, she's wearing a gown? Could you? Is there any picture in anyone's history where you can see both of you doing this? My wife, no, but me, I'm in wedding pictures like that. Yeah. Okay. Like, my point Pretty is much. is that you know th- these people are not going to Slayer shows. You know, so what is, what is, this absolutely has no meaning for them to be doing that. Some of these are innocent. Right. That's what... You it's know. just odd for me to see that because... It and this is, is now the... No, I agree. Like, like I why agree. is, why is Bush This is much. one black tie event. You know, why is he being a poser? And if that was the... Then what's this? Yeah, Here what, again, yeah, First Lady that? and George Bush. They're not even looking at each other, but they're both flashing the exact same yeah. sign in unison it is to the odd. crowd. It is. Uh, of course, Dick Cheney, his vice president. Well, he didn't go... Yeah, he didn't, he's not coming from a <laughs> yeah, Sepultura right. concert. You know what I'm right. saying? What's this guy doing? Uh, Bill Clinton, no big surprise, because he's sort of a rock star. I was surprised to see the Pope doing it, though. Now, these guys, this is Chris Angel. I'm not surprised to see him doing it. So is this that, one, That's this, the mind freak guy? Yeah, apparently, yeah. yeah. That one means nothing to me, although he is wearing the Freemasonic logo of that, the caliper and the... What is that? Is there a name for that logo? The square and the caliper. Not the cat. It's a, the uh, compass and the square. Okay. Here again from a Bush administration, former vice president. What was the guy's name? Dan, who didn't know how to, Quayle. Dan Quayle. Didn't know how to spell potato. That guy's absolutely not metal. French President Sarkozy. Huh. Yeah. He's French. Hillary Clinton. <laughs> oh, then that's... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, we... Don't get me started. Laura on Bush. We all know that's who, who she's working for. Laura Bush. That's right. Liz Taylor. Really? Again, some of these could be accidents. No surprise well, that we pe- see Paul McCartney. Yeah, people yeah, in you entertainment. You see the musicians doing right, it, but it's, it. it's, it's shocking to it's see. It's even a little weird to see Paul McCartney doing that because they're not metal, but Meryl whatever. Street, Michael Jackson. Again, music. <laughs> yeah, Kinda, that one. right? I mean, he's, why is he flashing? Well, look at Michael Jackson when he was a kid. There you <clears> go. <throat> see? That's interesting. He's got a 666. So we're about to look at four magazine covers that Mich- Michelle Obama's on. The first one is Ugh, Moore one Magazine. Favorite. You will see her subtly making a... Yeah. By itself, okay, I'm, I'm thinking, eh, not, there's, there's nothing here. Now here's a German magazine, Schweitzer, Schweitzer Illustrated. Again, she's got a subtle demon horn. Then on <clears throat> the cover of Vogue, she does the exact same thing. She's got a uh, devil <clears throat> horns. And then Ebony Magazine, again, it's very subtle, but it's there. Maybe she's got arthritis <laughs> and she just... Uh, maybe she's really a guy. I don't know. Now, when you find an artist like Nelly Furtado, where you can pull up dozens of images doing all of the symbols, the all-seeing eye, where you're like, covering... Yeah, the whole gambit. 
you will see the symbolism of an all-seeing eye on more film covers than you can imagine. And we're going to get to those in a minute. Um, these are just sort of the boring ones. But it continues on through our presidents, through Obama, which we're looking at now. <laughs> Several images where he's making this sign. A president, Scott, is followed by a staff of people that are basically, they're there to make sure his tie is straight. They're there to write his speeches so he doesn't say one little thing that could be misinterpreted. How is it that he's photographed a hundred times making devil horns? Why would the Pope ever be photographed making this? And why would the Pope wear a sash that has devil horns on it? Let's think about that. Well, there's a double. And why wow. would the Pope look like... That one was like scary. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Is that uh, Benedict? And look, and there, we're looking right now at a series of Pope images. It's not just one picture redone. These are different events. Prince William, of course, you know, he's in with total dark side. Even goes back to Ron Reagan. And I remember in the 80s that... I remember people saying, don't do that. It's it's of the devil. Right. Do you remember that? Oh, well, yeah, because yeah, I was always warned, don't listen to that devil So music, what is a president know? in the 80s, Ron Reagan, clean cut, straight arrow, what is he doing wearing these things? Although, you know what? Ron, Ron could have been metal. He could have hung out at Bohemian Grove, too. I got in trouble, you guys, for doing that. I went to a Catholic school, and I got in trouble for doing that. And the reason why I did that is because my sister at the time was taking sign language, and this means I love right. you. Yeah. Right, right. And and so my teacher thought I was with your thumb out. Yeah, but with okay. your thumb, thumb out, out. Okay. if you just do yeah. this, no, that's, if you just do that, uh, yeah. right? But with your thumb out. But still, so, that's when you're, you know, that's it's acceptable either way. I think it's ironic that the language created for people who can't hear mm -hmm. uses that to mean "I love you." Mm -hmm. Yeah, just thought I'd throw that out. There. No, no hidden mm -hmm. symbology. No. Oh, there's Hitler there, right? doing the. Uh, Doing the triangle. Hitler's doing a pyramid. I want you to remember this picture. We're going to come back to this in a minute. He was one of the first world leaders that started to come out with the pyramid symbolism. He was one of the first world leaders to actually begin publicly talking about a new world order. He even had a book called The New World Order never got published, was written, and he frequently in his speeches talks about the new order, the new order of the ages. His new world order was going to be his thousand-year Reich. Again, right. a counterfeit of God's thousand-year reign in the new Jerusalem. Justin Bieber, okay, and some of these no just don't... No surprise there. Yeah, these are not that surprising, so I'm not going to spend too much time. I just want to see if there's any other shockers in there. The world leader one definitely had caught my eye. We're also going to get to some corporate logos. So, I want you guys to look at some of these magazine covers, and or DVD DVD covers. We're now looking at films. And tell me if you see the image of the all-seeing eye in these. One of them is 127 hours. It's the story of that guy that got trapped between two rocks and had to saw his... Do you see the pyramid in there? Yeah. With the, it's uh, black for white, so where the eye would be is darkened out. You'll also see in films, remember, everything on a set is there by design, unless they're shooting something on location. So everything was put there, again, like a logo, with purpose behind it. You will see pyramids with all-seeing eyes on more media than you could ever shake a stick at. Some shows are just outright blatant. In fact, they have... A show called lucifer right. now we're looking at one yeah. called 666 park avenue the believers hard to see it but that's an upside down pyramid this was from a movie i was watching that had an all-seeing eye pyramid in the background of some i don't even remember what the film was good job dave here it is like again an old movie it was on cinemax uh <laughs> sure sleepy was. hollow yeah. monday cinemax. after dark huh? there's your all-seeing eye uh we already saw the 666 from that movie what's this actress's name ken carity's here again pyramid with the all-seeing eye in the background solomon khan came out with a movie called ready same thing he's got all-seeing eye with the 666 symbol with his hands. Of course, the show Lucifer, that's just blatant. Bart oh, Simpson. Come on, how's Bart? Oh, Bart <laughs> Simpson is loaded yeah. with imagery. In fact, you can't see it very well from your vantage point, but there's a pyramid on that book. They also, yeah. they'll have all these nondescript books on bookshelves for the Simpsons cartoon, but the one book that they always put the name of is The God Delusion by Richard yeah, Dawkins. Right. They will show that all the time. You know, you showed The Simpsons, and I read an article earlier today where it talked about how if you look at film and TV right up through the 80s, like early 80s maybe, all the stories that had to do with people dying or whatever, it was always like go into the light. You know, there was always that encouragement to go towards the light. But then 
there was this sudden shift, this article was saying. Now, if you look at different things, and this, they use The Simpsons, that's what made me think about it. As an example, there was an episode where the characters, whenever that situation is happening, it's stay away from the light. The light is bad. You know, uh, Finding Nemo when the two, uh, Nemo yeah, yeah, and Dory, yeah, yeah. Dory, you know, yeah. and, and she sees the light and yeah. he's like, no, no, you know, the light, like the light is bad. So, no, that's interesting. Like, yeah. Clockwork Orange. Illuminati director um, Stanley Kubrick. It's not just the all-seeing eye on some of the movie's material. There's the pyramid. Ooh, Clockwork Orange, too. Uh, you remember? It's, the uh, lo- Any Given Sunday. Yep. Good job. Now, of all the logos a football team could have, right. a pyramid with an all-seeing eye. Very cool movie. And actually, movie. specifically the eye of Horus. Movies. That was actually accurate to, uh, so was that, Eon Flux. Eon Flux, that. same thing. Uh, a <laughs> show called Arrow. There again, Comic Pyramid, book. All-Seeing Eye. A Hero Will Rise. Yeah. Who might they be referencing there? This is a cartoon. and what sh- I don't remember the show, but there's a lot of symbolism in here. You can see a 666 written on t- onto the that? floorboard. Oh, what film was this? A uh, movie called Being There. They're at a uh, mausoleum or a tomb shaped like a pyramid with an all-seeing eye. Uh, now, this is off the news. <laughs> uh, a company called Stocks to Watch. It looks and- like AOL. Doesn't it? We're going to get to AOL. Um, This is CNBC Stockwatch, and they've got the all seeing eye inside of a pyramid. Disney. Disney. Disney's littered. I mean, they're just. I didn't even have to see symbols to know. The what uh, Disney's agenda is well. Same thing with him. Walt Disney was huge. They, you know, communist. You know, all that stuff. So he. Oh well, he's a child molester, thirty third degree Freemason, and there are three sixes in Walt Disney's yep, signature, logo. which by itself doesn't mean anything to me until I saw the Walt Disney Store in New York City that their logo was nothing but those three sixes. It was six six six, and we're going to see that here in a minute. Here's a cab from the movie. I think this is the one where Bill Murray is visited by uh, Father. Chris Christmas. Oh, yeah. Scrooged. Scrooge. Scrooge. Awesome. Yeah. And the cab company is, uh, is that Phoenix? Oh, Psychic Cab. Oh, all just, seeing just as eye. bad. <laughs> you also see this in cartoons all over the place. All seeing eye. Just uh, just put in there. This is um, a movie called Divide. And who is the actress? She was in Clueless. Alicia Silverstone. Yeah. No, no, no the, the other one. one she wasn't good away. looking. Yeah. And she then died. a few months later, oh, she died. Uh, her live in boyfriend. Brittany Murphy. Murphy. Yeah, Brittany yeah, Brittany Murphy. Yes, Brittany she was Murphy. an eight. <sighs> now, that's someone that I think got associated with dark. Because you don't just die as a youngster and then someone else you're living with die a few months later and they're in their 30s. I mean, that just. It just doesn't yeah, happen. It was, it and then we see anyway. do it she's in a number of films where the symbology is there. Bob Dylan. Yeah. No big deal. Uh, all seeing eye. Going back to Star Trek. Now, this. remember this image. This image, it, it's a hands forming a pyramid. We're gonna, I'm going to show you this on some ancient buildings. A movie called Fracture. You can see the broken glass is forming a pyramid. And again, the eye of Anthony Hopkins is the all seeing eye in that. Oh, this is from Ghostbusters. As oh, yeah. the uh, pores. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Business called Galileo. I'm not sure what this was, but it's not just the Galileo logo that this guy's oh, talking about. It's shirt. on his, his shirt. shirt. Yeah. So uh, when you see it twice, it kind of. CBS. Now, CBS is an all-seeing eye. That's pretty much plain and simple. Well, they Uh, they had a pyramid there, though, too, so... They did. Pyramid with the all-seeing eye. This is a scene from Timberlake, an all-seeing eye on the set in the background. I don't know why that one's in there. Oh, here's your Madonna. Yeah, the pyramid jacket. When There was a movie called Mars Attacks. I think it was um, Robert De Niro. Freaking hilarious. Yeah. But here again, what was the logo of the Martians? An all-seeing eye pyramid. Why? I mean, yeah, who, right, who are they representing again? Tom Cruise, a Minority Report. He could see the future. I know. Ooh, great movie, Monsters Inc. Monsters another Inc. Another Disney Pixar type movie. Yep, another uh, Cyclopean type of uh, bunch of monsters, including well, the main dude was an all-seeing eye. Mystery Man. Actually, this one was hilarious, but. There again, it looks like Bank a CDS Stiller. logo, but it's the all-seeing eye. Well, National, National Treasure, Treasure not right. a big deal. Just with watch that the other night. That's the cover of the DVD. Uh, of course, that's the same symbol that's on our dollar bill. One Eye, The Zodiac, another great movie about a killer that used symbols, and he toyed with the media. Yeah, I read that book a long First time ago. That, yeah. I recommend that film <clears throat> yeah. to anybody. Nickelodeon. Where it gets disturbing is when you start to see it shown to our children. All-seeing eyes the all over the place. Right? This is Nickelodeon. Old Hollywood. Looks like she's sitting in that... 
Procter and Gamble image with a little well, that's actually uh, side cleavage mm, showing with the the that crescent was... moon and the female image. That's Babylonian in nature. Transformers single eye. Can you see it? This is our boy. Now we already saw Solomon Khan doing the six 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 eye. Now this one he's doing devil horn for his movie Ready. So that's two demonic images. Now when that happens to me, that's not a coincidence. That's a that's a that's a pattern. This was that half cartoon. What was the name of the uh, Scanner Darkly? And this was oh, the right T-shirt. Yeah, Keanu Reeves and uh, the guy that plays Iron Man. What's his name again? Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. That's, he's wearing all-seeing eye in the cartoon. The Federation of Planets logo is a pyramid. That's, <laughs> Spock is wearing it. That's now here, right. Spock also makes that. this pyramid symbol with his hands. And we're going to get to that one in a minute. And that, of course, still exists today through modern-day Star Trek movies. This is the new one with Christopher Pine. And you can see this is the uh, cockpit of this ship that can travel through time that's about to mess things up and it's got an all-seeing eye tomb raider pyramid with an eye in it v oh yeah about an alien landing and these aliens look just like humans and they've come to visit earth and that's an inverted pyramid and you can see the eye in it also and the girl on the front cover of it has got one eye visible we could do those all day it becomes almost everything coming out of hollywood seems to be this Eye of Horus concept. What was the uh, the wizard? What was his name? You're a wizard. Harry Potter. What was the girl's name in the show? I don't, re- I don't know. And what was Harry the actress's Potter. name? Emma, Emma Watson. Emma, Emma Watson. Watson. She's all over the place with the all-seeing eye. And that all-seeing eye, I mean, we first saw, it, saw the Eye of Horus. Well, I don't know if it's when we first saw it, but it was recorded as early as the hieroglyphics on the very edifices that were, you know, the evil uh, the evil symbols of the day where all of the rituals took place. Yeah. The all-seeing eye of Horus, it, it comes out of Egypt. I want to say that's Demi Lovato, but not sure. You will, that's Kesha, you will see this everywhere. Beatles, John Lennon. Now, do I think all of these people are necessarily in with the left-hand path? Or no, the but it's the people that are persuading them to do yeah, the shoots. Yeah, we need right. you to do some yeah. pictures. Now, now, cover your eye. You yeah, know. Right. And it doesn't even yeah. need necessarily the photographer, you know, but on his work order, it's going to be like, I need some images with this. So these people could be innocent participants. Um, here again, one eye, Katy Perry on the cover of Vanity Fair, Chloe Kardashian, although I do think they're just flat-out evil. It gets um, scary when you start to see it with kids. This, and I don't know the name of this organization. It'll pop back up. These are organizations like UNICEF. That's what that last one was that exists to help children. Lady Gaga, and she's also like whispering like, it's like they're, it's manifesting. They're coming out. There again, I don't know. I personally do think she's got something going on there, but she may not even know exactly what this means because I don't think they sit here and look for these types of images. But again, you can see the, we're flipping through a bunch of single-eyed photographs of... That was little Michael. Yeah, it Michael was. It was. Yes. little Michael. <clears throat> this is really <clears throat> interesting because this one I found today, this all-seeing eye that you see right here, the base of the World Trade Center, the one that was knocked down, in the subway stop that came into that station, it was littered with occultic symbols. There were single eyes all over the place. We'll see an image. Here is an occultic image on the floor of the train stop underneath the World Trade Center. It's actually a spiral. It is, with an all-seeing eye in the center of it. Here's another World Trade Center image with the all-seeing eye. Dealey Plaza. A lot of insiders talk about the assassination of John F. Kennedy, it being a uh, sacrificial ritual. It was done in, at a occultic temple. Dealey Plaza is a temple. If you look at Dealey Plaza from the air and you understand that Dealey Plaza is the Freemasonic symbol of the calipers. And if you look at the grassy knoll, there is the equivalent little grassy knoll on the other side. And if you take a point from the two grassy knolls and bring it to the base of Dealey Plaza, you've got a symbol of the Freemasons. you got the square. Now, mm. that by itself might not be cataclysmic except for the freemasonic temple first one ever built in texas is at that intersection and i don't think that's an accident and that's also i think you know that launched modern day conspiracy theory the reason i brought that up was the world trade center if you take 
an aerial image of Dealey Plaza. And do you guys remember the building blocks, the outer shell of the World Trade Center, where at, this would have begun at the third floor, where the metal branched out and began to form the columns that we view as those the columns of the World Trade Center? You can overlay a photograph of Dealey Plaza, and it mirrors perfectly the curve. That combined with a number of original designers, architects, and some of the builders walking off the project because they were building it knowing they had seen inside information that the building was going to be brought down and that the destruction of that building had been in the planning for some 30 plus years or more. In fact, you'd mentioned Bugs Bunny earlier and there's a Bugs Bunny scene. Yep. He's having a meltdown talking about how they're going to bring down the two towers. We're now looking at an image of the Hangover Part 2, All Seeing Eye of Horace. And again, we're the All Seeing Eye thing we could do all day. Um, we talked a little bit about Apple, but it's all over the place in our, again, certain industries, food, yeah, the, media. The script, the script Coca-Cola, that was one of the ones I looked at. If you uh, turn it upside down, and I believe it's upside, if you mirror it upside down, it in Arabic spells out no Muhammad, no Mecca. You're right. I, I couldn't hmm. prove that for myself, so I didn't include it, but I've seen that. <laughs> I found, Coca -Cola, it in, exactly. I found it in two different places, huh. and they show you the the the, uh, the Arab to go with it, and it's it's uncanny. Tower of Babel, which is CERN, and if you look at CERN's logo, that's a six six six. And of course, out in front of CERN, talking about symbols, you've got the god of destruction, which is Shiva. Shiva. Now to make you know it the, before you, you get off corporate logos or uh, iconic logos, the, the one thing that just blew me away is look at the Google Chrome. Logo. I was just going to say that it was right in my head. I'm like, you know, Google Chrome yeah, is the same at, thing. I, I, look at it every I day. use Chrome yeah. every, every day. day. Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, they've got that. Six, 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 Yeah. Yeah, it's the freaking sixes six, with yeah, the, the sixes. spiral all-seeing yeah. eye. Yep. So, uh, Dave, you know, do me both. a favor. You obviously know what Shiva, the god of destruction, is all about. Right. Now, again, this the scientists that work at CERN are dropping off the project in droves, or they're converting to Christianity because they're like, we are accessing a portal, and we are literally seeing entities flowing out of these, you know, the results of these particle collisions mm -hmm. that they're doing. And, of course, there's this pagan goddess. Shiva is the goddess of destruction. Look up Newsweek. Obama Shiva. Just Google that right now. And don't you find it interesting that Obama on that magazine cover is mimicking that god of destruction? Almost a little <laughs> foretelling. <laughs> He's even got multiple arms. This is off the Come side on. of a building. Remember I said, remember all those pyramid hand signs? Is that Hebrew? That's what, that writing is Hebrew. I'm going to do a little research and find out where and what this is. This was, I believe, the entrance to a synagogue. Absolutely Hebrew writing. And that is the same pyramid hand sign we've seen from Adolf Hitler on through uh, several presidents. Again, an all-seeing eye on the entrance to a temple. Note the symbols above it. Um, our good old friend Ishtar. Ishtar, yes. Notice her feet. Yep. They're, uh, and the wings and the and owls. There she is with an owl. More Ishtars. And you'll notice a lot of the Super Bowl halftime shows are reproductions of Ishtar or Mithra. And Madonna does a famous one. Here is a Pompeii tile mosaic. So in the days of Pompeii, prior to the city being buried by ash, because it was wiped out with, by a volcano. Yeah, that's Pan. There are in Pan. And we're talking Peter Pan, which we still, you know, kind of like today. That is the Pan, pointy ears. He is actually a pagan god. Right. And, of course, the Rockefeller Center, the, the head of the Illuminati in the United States. I thought it was Atlas. It's Prometheus. Oh, it's well, I, even... Uh, uh, I guess we know what we're going to be talking about next <laughs> episode. So. We're going to wow. close this show for the day. You've listened to Ben Wilson and Down the Rabbit Hole. Remember, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes light. This has been Down the Rabbit Hole. The guy be the glory. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>